Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. Welcome to your channel The Anatomy Canvas. In today's class we are going to discuss the histology of the uh, histology of the liver. So a little bit about its anatomy. The second largest organ of the body and largest gland weighing about 1 to 1.5 kg comprises 20% of the body weight. So a little bit about its uh, structure, the liver is completely invested by the fibrous tissue capsules called the Gleason capsules and Gleason capsule is thickened at the porta hepatis and sends trabeculae into the interior dividing the parenchyma into incomplete lobules. Liver has both the exocrine as well as the endocrine function. Among exocrine function is the secretion of the bile and the degradation of the waste products which are delivered back to intestine for the disposal. In addition to the exocrine function, in, uh, endocrine function of the liver includes the secretion of the albumin, the protein portion of several varieties of the lipoproteins, non-immune alpha and beta globulins, prothrombin, numerous glycoproteins including fibronectin etc so to understand these myriad function of the liver first important thing is to understand the blood supply of the liver so liver very important about the liver is that it has the dual blood supply 75% of the blood is liver, uh, to the liver is via portal vein and 25% blood um, uh, to the liver is via hepatic artery so portal vein uh, carries the blood from the intestines as well as from the stomach and the uh, pancreas and the spleen and then uh, this uh, deoxygenated uh, blood is coming to the uh, liver so liver uh, stands first in the pathway of the substances which are absorbed from the intestine so it is the first organ uh, which receives lot of the metabolic products but it is also the first organ which receives large number of the uh, noxious and toxic substances which are absorbed from the GIT. In addition to this 75% blood, the liver also receives 25% uh, oxygenated blood from the hepatic artery which is a branch of the celiac artery, celiac trunk. The What about venous uh, outflow is that the hepatic veins, the left and the right uh, and the middle and drains into the inferior vena cava. So sinusoids are irrigated by the mixed arterial blood here you can see this is the sublobular vein and this is the portal area which is carrying the portal artery, portal vein, hepatic artery and bile duct. The portal artery carrying 75% of the blood and hepatic artery carrying 25% of the oxygenated blood. These two oxygenated and deoxygenated blood are mixed in the sinusoids and then uh, these uh, mixed blood then baths the hepatocytes which are present here and from the sinusoid these this blood then enters into the central vein which is actually called the terminal hepatic venule from this terminal hepatic uh, venule or the central vein the blood enters into the sublobular vein and from the sublobular vein it drains into the right and left hepatic artery and then into the inferior vena cava so this is a little bit about its blood supply Next, we will uh, understand what is the structural organization of the liver. So, structurally, liver consists of different uh, things like hepatocytes organized at plates of the cells and nearly form 80% by weight of the liver. Then, the connective tissue stroma also present the blood vessels, the nerves, the lymphatics and the bile ducts and the sinusoidal capillaries. So, so structurally uh, to understand the structure of the liver there are three different way to uh, understand the structural organization of the liver. So first is the classic lobule, second way to understand is the portal lobule and third way to understand the structural organization of the liver is the liver acinus or acinus of rapaport. 
so here you can see the classic hepatic lobule this is a hexagonal block of the tissue in the center of the uh, hepatic lobule there is the central vein and uh, hexagonal block we draw imaginary lines in human uh, liver to understand the hexagonal block because there is a minimal amount of connective tissue over here and at each corner of this hexagonal block there are the portal areas the second way to understand is a triangular block of the tissue at the center of the triangular block is the portal area and at three corner is the central vein third way to understand is the liver acinus or acinus of rapaport acinus of rapaport having the short axis where the anastomosing branches of the two portal areas are present and the long axis which is formed by an imaginary line drawn between the two central veins so we will describe all of these one by one first is the classic lobule you can see unit drained by the central vein and direction of the blood flow is from periphery to the center then this is the portal lobule in the portal lobule at the center is present the portal area and direction is opposite to that it is uh, at the corner of the portal areas the three central veins are present third way to describe is the acinus of rapaport in acinus of rapaport short axis is formed by the anastomosing branches of the portal area and long axis are formed by the uh, a line drawn from the two central veins so uh, so classic hepatic lobule you can see these are the hexagonal blocks of the tissue in the center of which are present the central vein or the terminal hepatic venule so classic lobule form the structural and functional unit of the organ this is a hexagonal block of the tissue it has a vein at the center called central vein or terminal hepatic venules and at each corner of the hexagon we have the portal areas these portal areas contain the hepatic artery the portal vein and the bile duct here you can see it in detail this is the portal vein this is the hepatic artery and the bile duct in addition to these the three structure the fourth structure which is the lymphatic capillary is also present over here so the word uh, uh, portal triad is actually a misnomer because it can it do not contain three structures rather it contains a fourth structure the fourth structure is the lymphatic capillary so this is the histological h and e stain section of the classic hepatic lobule you can see at the center the central vein is present and these are the hexagonal blocks of the tissue and each corner you can appreciate the portal areas are present in this diagram you can also see this is the central vein or terminal hepatic venule from which radiating cards of the hepatocytes are present and surrounding connective tissue which form the hexagonal block and at each corner you can see the portal area portal area having the portal vein the hepatic artery and the bile duct this is the uh, at higher magnification the area of the central vein you can see this is the area of the central vein and from which radiating cards of the hepatocytes are formed these radiating cards or radiating plates are actually one or sometimes two cell thick this is the uh, higher magnification of the portal area you can see this one is the bile duct bile duct lined by the simple cuboidal epithelium this is the portal vein and this is the hepatic artery then hepatocytes are arranged one cell thick plates you can see in this diagram as well these are one cell thick plate at certain places they may be two cell thick but usually they are the one cell thick plates radiating from the central vein towards the periphery the irregular spaces between the hepatic plates are occupied by the liver sinusoid so in this diagram you can see the spaces are the actually the sinusoidal spaces which are present over here these sinusoidal spaces are lined by fenestrated endothelial cells and this is these are the margins of the uh, classic lobule and at each corner you can see the portal areas are present so this is the liver lobule you can see direction of the blood is from periphery to the center in in opposite to that the bile flows from the center to the periphery so but direction of the bile is opposite to that and uh, direction of the blood is from periphery to the center so 
this is the direction of the bile you can see from the center to the periphery this is the direction of the bile this is opposite to that of the direction of the blood next way to describe the structural organization of the liver is the hepatic acinus or acinus of rapaport this is another functional term to describe the structure of the liver in acinus uh, uh, the three poorly defined concentric regions of hepatic parenchyma surrounding the distributing artery in the center so this acinus of rapaport are the portocentric acinus or the uh, liver acinus provides best correlation among blood perfusion metabolic activity and liver pathology you can understand the zone 1 is the area which is closest to the blood vessel and zone 3 is the area which is farthest from the blood vessel so whenever there is a ischemic necrosis zone 3 is the area which is first to be affected and zone 1 is the area which is last to be affected in contrast to this whenever there is the bile duct stasis zone first is the area which is first to be affected and zone three is the area which is last to be active uh, affected in addition to this normal variation in the enzyme activity number and size of the cytoplasmic organelles and site of the size of the cytoplasmic glycogen deposits there are also variation between zone 1 and zone 3 and zone 2 is in between between in between intermediate between these two zones so uh, zone 1 you know close to the blood vessel this is closest to the blood vessel zone 2 is intermediate and zone 3 is adjacent to central vein and farthest from the blood vessel again you can see in this diagram this is the short axis this is the long axis this one is the zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 in this diagram you can also see the portal areas and the central vein and this is zone 1 zone 2 and zone 3 another histological diagram with edge and e stain section this is the portal area and this one uh, is the zone 1 this is the zone 2 and this is the zone 3 zone 3 close to the central vein or terminal hepatic venule and zone 1 is close to the anastomosing branches between the portal areas next way to describe the structural organization of the liver is the portal lobule portal lobule emphasizes the uh, exocrine function of the liver so it is a triangular block of the tissue at the center of this triangular block there is portal area and at each corner there are the three central vein veins of the three adjacent hepatic lobules so this organization emphasizes exocrine function it shows the uh, those areas of three adjacent hepatic lobules which drains into this bile duct so portal lobule is third way to describe the structural organization of the liver it is defined as part of liver parenchyma that drains blood into hepatic ductule present at the portal triad triangular in shape can be visualized by drawing imaginary line connecting central vein of the three adjacent liver lobules with the portal area at the center so this is the diagrammatic presentation hepatocytes and bile canaliculi so these are the hepatocytes they are arranged in one cell la thick layer uh, players separated by the cytocytes so you can see these are the hepatocytes and this area is the cytocytes these are the cytocytal spaces so these hepatocytes are arranged as radiating cards from the central vein towards the periphery again you must uh, understand that these hepatocytes are having actually the six faces so uh, four faces one phase is this where this hepatocyte faces the next hepatocyte second phase is this where this hepatocyte faces this hepatocyte third phase and the fourth phases are the site where these hepatocytes faces the Uh, adjacent uh, sinusoidal spaces and the fifth and the sixth faces of the hepatocytes are one above the page and one below the page also facing the nearby hepatocytes so hepatocytes resembles like that of a dice of a ludo and having the six faces 
this is the special staining uh, to show the connective tissue of the liver these are the reticulene stain is used because reticular connective tissue is present and minimal amount of connective tissue is present in the liver so this stain shows the connective tissue which is present this is a reticulene stain and this is normal uh, histological diagram of the liver this one is the portal area which also contain minimal amount of the connective tissue so about the hepatocytes polyhedral cells having one or two spherical nuclei with well developed nucleoli so this is the polyhedral uh, cell uh, it has so many times it having it is having the two nucleus as well and the structure of bivalent or tetrad constitute 80 percent of the liver by volume so in this diagram you can say this is the centrally located nucleus and the nucleolus of the liver these are the end plasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus large number of the mitochondria are present over here these are the bile canaliculi which are formed by the junction between the two adjacent hepatocytes and this is the sinusoidal space and between the sinusoidal epithelium and the uh, hepatocytal cell membrane there is the space of this or the perisinusoidal space which is present so hepatocyte nuclei are centrally located round and contain one or more nucleoli so this is special stain for hepatocyte in this you can see in many of the cells nuclei uh, nucleoli are present in this cell you can also see the two nucleoli are present in the uh, nucleus of the hepatocyte so cytoplasm is the strongly eosinophilic it contains fine basophilic granules representing large amount of the rough endoplasmic reticulum cytoplasmic glycogen is also present in it the smooth endoplasmic this is the uh, transmission electron micrograph of the hepatocyte in which you can see the centrally placed nucleus with prominent nucleolus large number of the mitochondria are present these are the glycogen granules nearly 800 to 2000 mitochondria are present in the um, cytoplasm of the hepatocytes also 200 to 300 peroxisomes and large number of the lysosomes are also present having the well developed Golgi apparatus well developed smooth endoplasmic reticulum further detoxification of different toxic materials which are absorbed from the GIT and drained into the liver and these all functions show that the cells having the high metabolic activity the glycogen granules and lipid vacuoles are usually prominent so you can see the glycogen vacuoles and the lipid uh, droplets which are present over here in these spaces so this is labeling of the mitochondria and labeling of the glycogen granule Lipofuscin dep deposit or lipochrome, the, which is the wear and tear pigment, it is PAS positive and diastase um, resistance pigment. PAS is the periodic acid shift stain, which is usually uh, used to stain the glycol component of the um, uh, cells, which is present in zone 3, particularly at the canalicular pole. The progressive increase of its amount and the number of the cells involved in old individual so you in this diagram you can also see this these are the lipofuscin deposit in this diagram you can also appreciate the lipofuscin deposit which are present their amount increases with age these are considered as wear and tear pigment of the cell the iron pigment special stain is used to uh, stain the iron which is present in this cell these are present in periportal hepatocytes so this is the special staining for the iron which is present in the hepat hepatocytes and this is special staining for the liver uh, copper which is present in the hepatocytes this is special staining for the bile which is present in the cells uh, the bile which is present in this area you can appreciate this bile as well so apoptotic cell which is present over here also called the consul man body so this is also present over here this is one of the type of apoptotic cell this may be uh, one of your mcq as well 
सो नेक्स्ट वी मूव ऑन टू दी बाइल केनेलिकुलस एंड बाइल पैसेज वे इन द लिवर सो स्टार्ट बाइल पैसेज वे स्टार्ट विद द स्मॉलेस्ट दैट इज द बाइल केनेलिकुलस सो दिस वन इज द बाइल केनेलिकुलस दैट इज इंटर स्पेस सेलुलर स्पेस विद द टाइम मीटर ऑफ अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन माइक्रोमीटर फॉर्म बाय अपोजिशन ऑफ द एच एस ऑफ द गटर लाइक हेमी कैनाल ऑन एडजेसेंट सर्फेसिस ऑफ टू आर थ्री नेबरिंग हिपैटोसाइड्स सो दिस आर द हिपैटोसाइड and this is the junction between two uh, gutter like hemicanals uh, between two adjacent hepatocytes so canal of herring connect the bile canaliculi to the bile ductule so these are the bile smaller bile canaliculi and when these bile canaliculi reaches near the portal area they acquire the epithelium which is simple cuboidal epithelium and here they have given the special name that is the canal of herring from here the bile enter into the bile ductule so bile canaliculus form between the this one is also bile canaliculus and here the bile ductule is present so so connect the bile canaliculi to bile ductule minute bile canaliculi form nets with the polygonal meshes in hepatic plates hepatic plates thus encloses network of canaliculi which passes to lobular periphery where they join to form the narrow intralobular ductules the terminal ductular canal of canal of herring these enter the bile ductule in portal canal and the flow of the bile is thus towards periphery of the lobule in opposite direction to the blood flow which is centripetal so in this diagram you can see this is the bile canaliculus this one is the canal of herring and this is the bile ductule where the um, uh, where uh, where the bile is drained in this diagram you can also so this is the smaller bile canaliculi here it acquires epithelium become canal of herring and then it enters into the bile duct or bile ductule sinusoidal next is the sinusoidal lining cell so these are the sinusoids which are present in between cards of the hepatocytes and these sinusoids having the fenestrated fen uh, irregular and discontinuous fenestrated epithelium and uh, formed by the endothelial cells kupfer cell and also the reticulin fibers which are present over here the sinusoidal spaces are the spaces slit like spaces separating the cards of the hepatocytes so here you can see in this diagram this is the sinusoid which is present in between one plate is this and another plate is this and in between these two plates of hepatocyte there is the sinusoid is present so uh, what are the cup for cell these are the hepatic macrophages derived from the blood monocytes live within the sinusoidal lumen attached to the endothelial surfaces they have bean shaped nucleus plump cytoplasm with star shaped extensions and more numerous near the portal areas these cells responds actively to many types of injury by proliferation and enlargement they contain vacuoles and particularly in diseased liver many diastase positive ps positive lysosomes and phagosomes as well as aggregate of the materials are present over here another important point about kupfer cell is that they do not have junction with endothelial cells the kupfer cells are not attached to the endothelial cell instead they span whole of the lumen of the um, uh, sinusoids and sometimes even occlude the lumen and in the cytoplasm of these kupfer cells sometimes uh, the metabolic products of iron are present showing that these cells uh, are involved in the destruction of the senescent or old rbcs so this is the diagram in which this this area is the sinusoid and this area is the hepatocytic plate and these smaller nuclei are that of the endothelial cells and here you can see these are the nuclei of the kupfer cell although very difficult to uh, differentiate and understand this kupfer cell in h and e staining but here you can see another kupfer cell present over here and these are the eosinophilic cell and these spaces are the sinusoidal spaces so uh, this is the diagram you can see the hepatocyte this area is the perisinusoidal space or space of this and these are the kupfer cells which are present over here these are the endothelial cells of sinusoidal endothelium and here you can see discontinuous epith uh, basal lamina and large fenestration present between these endothelial cells 
So this is the space of this or endothelial space, uh, perisinusoidal space. Space between hepatocyte and this, the zone of the intercellular exchange contains plasma cells, scanty connective tissue, and perisinusoidal cells. Another important point is the hepatic stellate cell, also called the ito cell, the interstitial fat storing cell, or hepatic lipocyte and pit cell present in this space of this. Here you can see the uh, Kupfer cell which is present in space of this. The, here you can see the enlarged uh, perisinusoidal space in a topsy of the liver. And here you can see Kupfer cells in the space of this. These are the binucleated hepatocyte. Hepatic stellate cells are ito cells in the present in the perisinusoidal space. These are also called the perisinusoidal lipocyte. Here you can see this is the quiescent hepatic um, uh, stellate cell and this is the uh, active hepatic uh, stellate cell causing the deposition of the connective tissue over here. So it secretes the reticular fiber over here. Usually it is difficult to differentiate from the sinusoidal lining cells modified. These are modified resting fibroblasts that can store fats and vitamin A and also involved in a secretion of the reticular fibers so their amount increases in certain diseases of the liver whenever there is a cirrhosis or fibrosis so these cells become activated and they secrete large amount of the reticular fibers over here. They produce hepatocyte growth factor and collagen and play a significant role in hepatic fibrogenesis. Here you can see this is the itocell or hepatic uh, sinusoidal cell which is present over here in space of the DC. Here you can see the Kupfer cell and this is the uh, itocell which is present over here in the space of DC. Prominent cells in hypervitaminosis A you can see these are also itocells. Next is little bit about the portal tract uh, the each portal tract contains bile duct and several bile duct tubules, hepatic artery, portal vein and lymphatic channels. So this is the portal area here you can see bile duct. You can appreciate bile duct because epithelium is different. This is simple cuboidal epithelium. A large portal vein you can appreciate and a smaller hepatic arteriole which is present over here. Normally contain a few macrophages and lymphocytes and mast cells but may be increased in cases of the viral hepatitis. Uh, no polymorph or nuclear plasma cells or leukocytes are present in it. Connective tissue consists of mainly type 1 collagen which is seen as thick deep blue fiber on the trichrome stain. So this is the stain a trichrome stain and here you can see bluish color stain fibers which are the type 1 collagen fibers. In subcapsular region of the liver, the portal tract contain more and denser connective tissue. Must not be interpreted as a cirrhosis in veg or superficial biopsy specimen because in subcapsular region this is normal. So frequently there are the uh, lymphocytes which are present not in the normal liver but in cases of the coronal viral hepatitis you can see large number of the lymphocytes in portal areas. And this is another diagram this showing the pericapsular fibrosis which is normal uh, in the pericapsular region. This is not the cirrhosis. So bile duct large intrahepatic or septal bile ducts lined by tall columnar epithelium located in central part of the portal tract and having more peripheral fibrous tissue than the smaller one. Collagen fibers are arranged in irregular and circumferential but not the concentric matter. Interlobular bile ducts, <coughs> the smaller are interlobular bile ducts are lined by cuboidal epithelium. Here you can see these are the smaller interlobular bile ducts. There may be one or two section of this. The surrounding there is a basement membrane and small amount of the periductal connective tissue. One or more interlobular ducts may be present in it. Bile ductules located in peripheral zone of the portal areas and are smaller lumen of less than 20 mm than in the interlobular ducts. So these are smaller bile ductules which are present over here. Then the limiting plate, another important thing, hepatocyte bartering the portal tracts are joined together and form a distinct row called the limiting plate. 
डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दिस लिमिटिंग प्लेट बाय नेक्रो इन्फ्लेमेशन एंड एपोप्टोसिस इज हॉल मार्क ऑफ द क्रोनिक हेपेटाइटिस दैट इज पीस मील नेक्रोसिस एंड द इंटरफेस हेपेटाइटिस अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड इज द लिमिटिंग बिटवीन देयर इज अ स्मॉलर अमाउंट ऑफ द कनेक्टिव टिश्यू बिटवीन दिस लिमिटिंग मेम्ब्रेन एंड द कनेक्टिव टिश्यू ऑफ द पोर्टल एरिया एंड दिस स्मॉलर स्पेस इज कॉल्ड स्पेस ऑफ द माल सो दिस इज द स्पेस ऑफ द माल एक्चुअली इज द स्पेस फेयर द लिम्फ ओरिजिनेट इन द लिवर सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यू एज वेल फॉर फ्रॉम योर एग्जाम्स पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू द स्पेस ऑफ माल इज प्रेजेंट एज एज अ स्मॉल स्पेस पोटेंशियल स्पेस बिटवीन द लिमिटिंग मेम्ब्रेन एंड बिटवीन द कनेक्टिव टिश्यू ऑफ द पोर्टल एरियाज वेयर लिम्फ ओरिजिनेट्स This is a special stain in the stain in the liver biopsy. Here you can see this is Mason's trichrome stain, where where the connective tissue fibers type one collagen fiber stain bluish with the uh, Mason's trichrome stain. And here I com complete my lecture today's class, a lengthy class, but very important and interesting topic. Uh, here are the references, the uh, basic histology by Laiku San Siddiq. This histology text and atlas by Jan Quera and histology text and atlas by H Ross. So thank you very much, students, for your attention for today's lengthy class. Uh, this was my favorite topic in histology, and uh, it is also very important. So thank you so much for your attention. Till the next class, which will be the last class for GIT, and till the next class, Allah Hafiz.